Hello and welcome to EDRAP Interviews. This is the first in our Country Profile series where we'll be exploring the changes and advancements in the use of information and communication technologies for development in different countries of the Asia-Pacific. Joining us today is Kesuke Kamimura, Executive Research Fellow and Associate Professor at the Center for Global Communications, or GLOCOM, in Japan. Kesuke has contributed to three print editions of the Digital Review of Asia-Pacific, also known as DRAP, and in this eDRAP project, as we transition from a printed publication to an open, collaboratively produced online resource, Kesuke is a key resource person in ICT development in Japan. So welcome, Kesuke. Thank you so much for being with us today. Hi, uh, my pleasure. Okay. So as the last print edition of DRAP was written in 2010, today we will look at new developments since then the impact of these new developments on Japan and what are the future plans. Now firstly, could you tell us a little bit about your background and about Glowcom? Yes, uh, so I'm, my name is Keisuke Kamimura. I'm Executive Research Fellow and Associate Professor at, at Glowcom. And my research, uh, I, I am doing research on uh, various ICT related issues, particularly uh, broadband policy, ICT policy, and uh, the digital divide uh, from particularly linguistic uh, point of view. But I, uh, I or Glocum more precisely, Glocum is engaged in various uh, recommendation uh, for national ICT policy building. So uh, I, I, I do not uh, only research, but uh, also uh, do some uh, sort of advocacy or uh, yeah, that kind of work as well. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'd like to now focus on um, some of the changes and new development in Japan in the area of ICT for development. Um, could you tell us about any policy changes related to ICT and ICT for, for development since 2010? And what have been the key triggers or motivation for these changes? Yes. Uh, uh, since the last edition of the Digital Review was published, we had a change of government. Uh, the Democratic Party took to government, but they lost the office last year. So uh, in a way, we ha and uh, uh, during the democratic government, uh, national ICT policy was not uh, developed. Uh, smaller pieces were developed, developed like uh, national strategy for open data, uh, uh, or uh, smaller uh, policy issues were mentioned. But uh, after three years, uh, we, the current government, Liberal Democrats, are uh, reviewing the national strategy for ICT development, and they just uh, re released uh, a draft policy paper last week. N now uh, we are, I mean, Glocom is reviewing the document uh, in details. And uh, one of the concerns we have uh, in the Japanese ICT policy context uh, is one of the concerns we have is ICT, uh, we have the infrastructure nationwide, like uh, 100 megabit per second uh, optical fiber network. Uh, but uh, infrastructure has not turned to social or societal values yet. So um, we are reviewing the policy uh, from the viewpoint how we can make uh, the best social and societal value out of the infrastructure. So uh, that's one of the backgrounds uh, of our current policy uh, making dialogue here in Japan. Yes, because um, in the last print edition of DRAP, you did mention, um, in the Japan section which you co-wrote with Adam Peake, you did mention uh, a survey that was done, or a research study that was done, where, you, where it said um, only 45% of 
ICT uses um, value ICT as useful for solving problems such as those related to health, social welfare, in education and employment. Um, so has another survey been done since then um, to, to, to look at whether there were any changes? Um, I am not familiar with any uh, uh, research figures, but the issue is still shared among policymakers or okay. policy researchers like us. So uh, that is the case now yet. Yes. Okay. And since there's been some policy change, has there been, there been any studies on um, um, whether there have been any results after these policy changes or impact on Japan? The society um, in Japan? Yes. So I mentioned that uh, ICT has not turned to policy, uh, social or societal values. Um, some, I have uh, come across some research that mentions that uh, social structure, uh, uh, we have ICT in place, but we do have old social structure, and uh, that's that's the reason why ICT has not turned to valuable uh, assets of our uh, society. So that's one uh, research outcome I have uh, come across on uh, on this issue. Uh, right. Does that yeah, answer your question? Sure, yeah. But I understand um, in terms of um, um, assistant outside, assistant outside of Japan. Um, I think the Japanese government has been quite active in, in sort of promoting the use of ICT, especially in the area of education. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you talk about education, uh, there is an issue. Uh, ICT, mm, how do I put it? So, um, we, we love gadgets like iPad or i whatever. So uh, we tend to teach uh, ICT class from a technology point of view, but actually uh, we have to look at uh, skills or literacy. Uh, so um, that's one one of the weak points that uh, ICT education in Japan has. Okay. Right. Now, I'd like to follow up with, with you on some of the other things that were discussed in the last print edition of DRAP. Um, the first is related to e-government. Um, mm -hmm. There, in, in the last edition, you commented on the results of the 2005 um, United Nations e-government survey, where Japan was ranked 14th. Mm -hmm. And what, um, what was mentioned in the report in the e -DRAP, uh, sorry, in the DRAP publication was that from a technical point of view, um, the Japanese e-government readiness should be much higher. Right? Mm -hmm. And now in the latest UN e-government survey of 2012, Japan's ranking moved down to 18th place. So right. what is your assessment of e-government and e-governance in Japan? Um, one, I think one of the reasons is that we do not have a national electronic identity management system or electronic ID nationwide. So I believe that uh, that pushes down the Japan's rank, Japan's ranking in uh, e-readiness or e-government assessment. And I should have mentioned that we have now uh, electronic ID uh, is legislated uh, in, legisla is in legislation. So I believe the ranking will uh, gradually uh, higher for Japan in in a few few years time. Could you tell us what are, um, you mentioned e, um, EID, but are there any other e-government initiatives that are, go that are going on um, or, or planned? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, another issue that the government is actively seeking now is open data. Uh, you know, uh, various European countries and the United States and the rest of the world are taking to open data, but Japan, uh, the government, has published a national open data strategy policy last uh, July, June, July timeframe, and uh, the policy says that uh, the government uh, would publish uh, the kind of data that they use to keep to themselves only, 
uh, but they they publish data in an open manner so that the private sector or anyone else uh, would make uh, any kind of innovative use out of the data published. So uh, that's one initiative. And open data, uh, the government take, the, the government cares about open data because it would uh, contribute to solving the social problems that we uh, believe ICT should contribute to. Uh, so uh, we try to address social issues like aid, social issues like aging or, or telemedicine or child care uh, by ICT uh, by, the, by the help of ICT but we haven't done much yet and uh, <clears throat> we, we think that by giving open data available by, 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 by making open data available uh, not all but many of the social issues uh, may be uh, addressed uh, by the help of uh, application of open data and uh, innovative ideas from the private sector. Right. Could you share with us um, um, the the process that um, the Japanese government has gone through in developing this open data policy? Because um, I believe um, you were involved, or or Glowcom was involved in and in. Um, it, with, with the government in developing this open data policy. So I'm interested in knowing um, that the process of, de of development of this policy, um, for example, mm -hmm. were, um, were the citizens involved in developing this, this um, open data policy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have a standing committee called the National IT Strategy Headquarters or Strategic Headquarters, uh, which takes care of all nationwide IT policy. And, but uh, they had they have they have some uh, dedicated working groups and task forces, and uh, one of my colleagues uh, was appointed as member for the task force for electronic uh, government or electronic government reform, and uh, we we did a, a survey on open data in selected European countries and the US a few years ago and my my colleague uh, uh, based on the, the outcome uh, my colleague uh, you know made uh, uh, yeah I mean, uh, tried to stress that this is an important issue and gradually uh, we also done uh, multi-stakeholder dialogue to discuss open data policy. We invited some uh, uh, government officers. Uh, we also uh, invited uh, industry experts as well. So uh, we had a multi-stakeholder forum to uh, forum how to make the most use of open data uh, a few years back. And uh, all our effort, as well as other stakeholders' effort uh, uh, streamed into the policy making for open data as we see it now. So, so far, has there been general agreement among all the government agencies that you know open data is a good thing, or are you f faced with some resistance? Yeah, that's yes and no, as you ex as you can expect with any of government related uh, issue, um, <clears throat> but. Uh, the national policy is that we do need open data. So uh, uh, ministries or departments can only reject case by base, case by case basis. So basically, uh, they have to commit making data available. But uh, to to make coordination more effective, uh, we uh, the government appointed national uh, no. Government CIO, Government Chief Information Officer, just this April. Uh, uh, the position is uh, mandated to coordinate all open data or other gov open government, I mean, uh, e government uh, efforts uh, government wide. So uh, traditionally, uh, ministries or departments uh, tend to. Uh, 
refuse or uh, sort of sabotage uh, the, uh, against the national policy. But now uh, uh, the, C the CIO is, has responsible and authority to coordinate across government. So we, uh, we are in a much better position now. I would say. Are there any dates on uh, when this open data portal will be launched? Uh, dates? I, sorry, I am not familiar with the exact dates, but I, to my understanding, we should have launched an open data portal last March. So okay. I think we are already Oh, you're already there. live. Okay. Yeah. And what are the tr strategies? Are there any strategies? Um, behind um, getting the the citizens in the private sector to to use this open data open data for innovation, for example, in Singapore they organize a lot of competitions um, to 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 get you know um, citizens and the private sector to innovate using the open data. Are there any plans for for that similar to Singapore? Yeah, um, I don't know if government some some initiative, but uh, private sector. Uh, players or research research institutes like Glocom ourselves are very positive about uh, putting various efforts and knowledge together. So Glocom has hosted uh, various uh, open meetings like hackathon and ideathons to uh, to solicit to, to solicit ideas and even encourage programmers to do some coding based on uh, open data. Uh, and how to uh, how to make open data actually uh, uh, addressing our uh, issues. Okay, um, I'd like to move on now to to talk a little bit about um, capa ICT capacity building in Japan, um, yeah. because in the last print edition of um, DRAP, um, it's mentioned that. Um, tertiary education in Japan is often criticized as not being capable of training IT students to the level that the industry requires. And to meet that industry demand, um, at that time the Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science and Technology started a, a, a training program um, for advanced IT specialists. So, I mean, since then, I'd like to ask whether this demand supply gap has been reduced or widened. Mm -hmm. um. I, th I think to answer the questions correctly, you should uh, I should uh, explain how companies employ uh, you know new employee uh, new guys. So uh, in Japan, in, in Japanese con context, uh, Japanese companies do not expect university graduates uh, have much ICT skills or any kind of skills that they need to fully join the company. So they believe, uh, the company believe that uh, they should train uh, you know, freshmen or fresh women uh, from scratch. So <clears throat> there is a gap, uh, but uh, companies do not uh, expect much from university education in ICT training or any kind of education. Uh, so uh, there is there is a gap between ed college, university education, and uh, business demand uh, in any uh, area of business. But uh, yes, uh, there is a gap between uh, uh, there is a gap of uh, uh, demand uh, supply uh, gap. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, the the program I mentioned in the DIRAP in the last issue. Uh, was a very small scale pilot program. So uh, even they were successful, I don't think there has been much impact on the uh, wider uh, tertiary uh, ICT education. Okay. But um, uh, <clears throat> so again, uh, we have ICT infrastructure or uh, geeky technologists uh, in place, but the question is how uh, they, how we can make them take to actual social and societal problems. So I think ICT education uh, should have to look at 
uh, technology as well as uh, uh, as well as uh, more society, societal and social uh, aspects. So they need to learn, uh, uh, you know, uh, how do I put it? Innovation or uh, you know, idea making uh, method, methods or something like that. Okay. Um, it's really exciting to hear of, of your experience and your insight in, in the area of policy development and e-governance. Um, I'm interested to hear if there are any particular trends that you're, you are observing in ICT for development in Japan, particularly in the next 12 months or so? Um, so Japan is a moderately developed country now, so we have different development aspects here. Uh, one issue uh, we uh, are concerned about is uh, caretaking for the elderly people. Uh, and another area is regional and remote areas, smaller islands uh, in the Pacific Ocean, uh, uh, so territories like that. So those two areas are uh, big concerns. So uh, ICT for development would uh, ICT develop in in Japanese policy context mean that uh, uh, aging and uh, regional and remote areas. So that, that there would uh, I would expect there will there would be something taking place in the next 12 months in those two segments, yes. Okay, thanks. Um, Keisuke, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you today. Thank you, and um, we look forward to keeping in touch with you for latest ICT updates in Japan. Um, we we'll certainly encourage the EDRAP community to comment and share their thoughts on the information and analysis that you have provided today. Okay, and to the listeners, um, thank you for listening. You can find more information about ICT for Development in Japan at the EDRAP website, digitalreview.asia. Thank you again, and goodbye for now. Thank you.